Good evening to all. I warmly welcome you to our Cell Talk webinar. In today's session, Nupur will be presenting the research Circular RNA Sequencing Reveals Serum Exosome Circular RNA Panel for High Grade Astrocytoma Diagnosis. Our speaker Nupur is working as a senior bioinformatics scientist at Renix. She is working on bioinformatics and other multiple projects as well. Some of her projects include designing personalized new antigen vaccines for cancer patients and exploring the genes behind Cordoma and the health applications of digital healthcare wearables. Nupur has a doctoral degree in physics and her research work focused on studies of confined polymers. Before joining Renix, she worked at the Indian Institute of Science, Raman Research Institute, Colab Tree, and the Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. At Renix, she has gained experience as not only a research mentor, but as a scientist contributing to various international publications. So without further ado, I would like to invite Nupur to take over the session. Over to you, Nupur. Thanks, Jagita, for your nice introduction. Welcome, everybody. Today, I am going to talk about a research article whose title is Circular RNA Sequencing Reveals Serum Exosome Circular RNA Panel for High-Grade Astrocytoma Diagnosis. It is published by P.I.O. Lee. She is the first author and other authors are also there. It is published in the journal Clinical Chemistry in the year 2022. This journal has an impact factor of 12.167. This research article is related to the astrocytoma, but in general, in a broader view, it has impact on other brain types of brain cancers and in, uh, in other genetic diseases also. This research article is about circular RNAs, which are frequently expressed in brain tissues. They are tissue specific and they can be found in exosomes and even in human body fluids like serum, saliva, plasma. And their ex expression levels of circular RNAs change in different stages of neural development. That's why they play an important role in diseases related to nervous system such as glioma. Astrocytoma, it is cell brain cancer. It is a brain cancer where the tumor originates in astrocyte cells. In this figure, this blue color cell is the astrocyte, which maintains the connection between the blood vessel and the neurons. Great for astrocytoma is known as glioblastoma, which has very quite low survival period. The median survival is 15 months only. At present, the diagnosis of Astrocytoma is based on the imaging techniques, basically MRI techniques and its variations like fMRI, MRI spectroscopy. The molecular characterizations with using the tissue sample is quite challenging because you need the sample from the brain, but that brain surgery is required. Now coming to the circular RNA, it is a type of RNA, single stranded but it is covalently closed loop. No. It is produced during the splicing event and different, this figure shows the different mechanisms by which circular RNAs are produced. The biogenesis is nicely shown here. Two common methods are self splicing and direct back splicing. What happens in case of the self splicing, the five prime end of an exon ligates with the three prime end of a downstream exon so by self splicing but in case of back splicing the five prime side of a downstream exon binds ligates with the three prime sides of an upstream exon so then that's they create loops like structure and Circular RNAs often contains introns only, like shown here. Those are the intronic circular RNAs. But however, the major in fact is the three prime and five prime free ends are joined here together. Circular RNAs are mostly found in the cytoplasm and they play vital roles in the occurrence, development, inversion, diagnosis, and prognosis of tumors. Now, exosome. Exosomes are vesicles, they have a membrane. They play many very important role in our body. 
they act as a carrier of a cargo. They mediate interactions between different components, components of different types of cells, and they are they widely exist in different places in tissues, in body fluids, fluids, and that's an important fact. The exosomes are available in body fluids like sida, and that's why they can be collected easily for any diagnosis. And human derived exosomes also contain some signature RNAs, which are related to the cancer. Now, circular RNAs are also found in the exosomes, large in a large number. They enter exosomes in different ways, like here shown is a long non-coding RNAs often, often regulates sorting of the circular RNAs to enter for entering to the exosomes. Circular RNAs also act as a micro RNAs bonds, and RNA bind proteins also regulate the sorting of the exosomal RNA. And for the exosomes carrying circular RNAs, when it is for little bit smaller sizes, they actually come out from the cell cell and goes to the body fluid. Circular RNAs are more abundant in brain tissues compared to other tissues. Issues an exosome also can cross blood brain barrier and accessible in human blood biopters like sera. Now that's why serum exosome circular RNAs represent a new class of exosome based cancer biomarker. Be and being a potential tool for liquid biopsy, which is quite important in case of the glioblastoma because for its molecular characterization requires requires the brain tissue, so it's getting that getting that is quite challenging, and that's why current diagnosis is primarily dependent on the imaging methods. Thus, and on the other hand, potential of miRNA and long known coding RNAs are studied. But circular RNAs are still not well studied. With this challenge, this, this current research articles want to study the circular RNA profiles. They further want to identify features of circular RNAs in primary Hg cells and cell derived exosomes. They, uh, they, want, so they also want to identify CDAP exosome circular RNA panel for liquid biopsy in the early stages and identify tissue circular RNAs as markers for monitoring the prognosis. For this study, they collected cells primarily from three patients, all are of grade 4 astrocytoma. Cells were cultured in their appropriate medium, and the exosomes were isolated from the cells by centrifuge methods. Serum exosomes were isolated using total exosome isolation kit of infiltrogen, and finally, circular RNAs were isolated. While isolation of circular RNA, they ensured removal of ribosomal RNA and linear RNAs. Then circular RNAs were purified, amplified, and finally sequenced by Illumina HiSec. The sequence data when then, was then aligned with respect to the reference genome. To identify the circular RNAs, they used a database, SAC based database, to compare their sequences with the database sequence. And they ensured the circular RNAs by this, by satisfying these six criteria, which were include the GU or AG bases will appear on both sides of the splice site, presence of breakpoint. So they followed these six points to ensure that circular RNAs are identified. In the with this study, they finally, they initially started the molecular features of the samples. They follow the similar patterns, and the patterns is also expected, like, like olic 2 olic 2 p 53 genes that express MGMT shows loss, IDYZ1 shows mutations. All samples have similar molecular nature. Then comes to the sequencing data. Sequencing of three primary culture cells and their corresponding cell derived exosomes were done. Primary cells showed a large number of circular RNAs, more than 8,000, whereas cell derived exosomes showed quite less number of circular RNAs, 2,633 only. That means circular RNA concentrations are more in HDS cells, and circulars are more 
and they also observed they are only mainly originated from the exon region, that means intronic circular RNA cellulase. When they studied, since there is the doubt a large number of circulants, they selected top content expressed RNAs and studied their biological functions. And they observed that cellular metabolic processes, biological regulation, and cellular component organizations are the top biological processes. As one of the aim of this study is to create the profiling of the circular RNAs, they check the chromosome distribution. They check that for both cell circular RNA and exosome circular RNAs, chromosome 1, for, uh, chromosome 3, and chromosome 7 are mostly populated by the four corresponding host genes. Chromosome Y did not produce in circular RNAs in both cases. Only difference is observed in case of chromosome 9. This bar here, it shows large number, more, large number of host genes for cell circular RNAs, but quite less for the exosome derived circular RNAs. They also check the length distributions of the circular RNAs. Most of them are less than 1,000 nucleotides, and the median length belongs to 400 nucleotides. And almost half, and they also studied the length distribution for the intronic and the intergenic circular RNAs. Then they wanted to study how the circular RNAs coexistes in different types of cells. For the same derived circular RNAs, 26 were overlapping across all three samples. And this number is less only 12 for the corresponding exosome derived circular RNAs. For this coexisting circular RNA, they checked the enriched categories, only general functional prediction, signal transaction mechanisms. And for exosome derived circular RNAs, it is the again general functional prediction and cytoskeletal. With this common circular RNAs, then they try to find what are the common circular RNAs yes, among the highly expressed circular RNAs. They found only 11, which are common across all samples. 11 higher level cell derived exosome circular were included in the cell circular RNAs also. Then they found, wanted to find circular RNAs yes, across all samples. Like this figure shows that for the patient one, cells derived circular RNAs and exosome derived circular RNAs has total weight 33 commons. This intersection is A has the value 833. And compared to the other patients, they found actually there are five higher level cell circular RNAs across all samples. They considered Across two, three, uh, two here. Among these three circular RNAs are highly expressed in both HDS cells and exosomes only. Then they focused on the tumor and normal tissues of the tissues collected from the, the tumor site and normal blood samples. Here they observed that a large number of circulate that a large number of circular RNAs they already obtained from the cell derived exosomes. Among them, it, they found it difficult to choose the circular RNAs. They randomly choose 32 and they checked their expression in 30 patients and two normal samples. And almost all of them are expressed at low concentrations in the tumor tissues, this site. Now, among these 32, they checked only eight showed highly significant differences in the expression between tumor and normal samples. So they filter out this eight circular RNAs as potential biomarker. Now the among these potential biomarkers, all since all of them have low concentration in the tumor cell, the question remains the whether it is related to the prognosis of the disease. They did survival analysis and from there they identified four circular RNAs which are marked, which are shown here in this green squares. First, they are actually associated with the overall circulars, overall survival. So finally, so at this stage, they 
get four circular RNAs related to the survival or the survival which can be used as a marker for the disease prognosis. Then the focused on the serum exosome circular RNAs. They worked with those previously selected 32 circular RNAs and check their expression in serum from patients and individuals, healthy individuals. And 13 they observed are socially significantly different, nine up, nine down, and four up. Among them, these 33 circular RNAs had the largest difference in the expression levels between normal and patient serum. One of them is up regulated and two are down regulated. So they finally come up with these three as the possible biomarkers for the serum sample. So they check the area under the curve for the HGA detection for all of three, and it was quite high. That's why they tell that these three can act as a biomarker. They can distinguish the between normal and the HGA patients. Finally, this paper, this research article tells about the down regulation of most of the differentials expressed circular RNAs was observed in tissues and serum exosome compared to the normal counterpart. And most of the reduced circular RNAs are involved in glioma formation and development. Identify the items so identifies these three serum exosome circular RNAs, which could form a panel of non invasive liquid power markers for the precise training of HGA. It also highlights the potential of circular RNAs. They are abundant in both and cell derived exosomes. The number and expressions are more enriched in HGA cells than in copiart exosome. This study result actually contradicts with the earlier reported reports. And exosomes can transmit many HGA cell specific circular RNAs into blood circulation to perform their biological function and that's why they can serve as a target for liquid biopsy. Another important fact is exosomes also contain some circular RNAs that were not detected in HGA cells and vice versa. That means some circular RNAs existed in HGS cells only. They do not enter in the exosomes. This study has several challenges and limitations also. Due to the existence of variable splicing, it is difficult to extract the, the accurate length of the and sequence of the circular RNAs. That's why they used the software and compared their result with the existing database. Also, the CRIS currently aims to develop the circular RNA research technology, which is not developed yet. So the large scale identification of full length circular RNA sequences from RNA sequencing still needs to be developed. In conclusion, it tells that it characterizes HGA cell circular RNAs and exosome circular RNAs. A seed of exosome panel of three circular RNAs was identified as biomarker Tissue circular RNAs can serve as tissue biopsy targets for monitoring HGA processes. They found four circular RNAs from the tissue samples well, to be used for the prognosis study. The impact of the research is that it identifies novel issues in the field of the HGA, exosome, and circular RNA research. It provides new directions for future studies. It enhances the potential of liquid biopsy, which may be improved for di a diagnosis cancer as size where accessing tissue is difficult. That's all I want to say today. I thank everybody for your attention. If you are further interested, you can write me at nukur at directrenix.org. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Nupur, for this informative and detailed talk. Now I open the floor to the audience. Still, we are not received any question. We can wait for some, some time. Uh, we have question from Numer. Can these three circular RNAs be used to diagnose cancer earlier than already available methods? Yes, it is possible. That's, that's the one of the outcome of this research article 
this time because these RNAs are available in the serum, which is easy to collect from the patient. That's why it is possible to use them for early diagnosis. Uh, we have also a next question from Numer. Uh, Do they reflect response to treatment? Can they be used to distinguish the various grades of astrocytoma? This is not clear from the study, both of these questions. The effect of treatment is not studied here. The sample was collected at a stage and then was for the serum, the serum samples were collected and then the experiment was done. But with prognosis, the sample was not collected and the report is this report can't answer these questions. Hope it uh, answers your question, Numer. Uh, I don't see further questions coming from the audience. Again, uh, I want to I want to thank uh, Nupur for the great presentation, and I'm sure all of us can have a takeaways from this. Uh, Nupur, may I request you to go to your final slide? Thank you. Before we conclude this webinar, I would like to inform everyone that our next presentation will be on 7th March 2023, and Isha will be presenting research titled Quality of YouTube Videos on Meningioma Treatment Using the Discern Instrument. I would like to thank you all for your time and kind attention today. Hope to see you all at the upcoming presentation. Thank you so much.